everyone and happy new year this is the first vlog of the new year and i'm feeling so excited about youtube we took kind of a bigger break than usual over the holidays and really just did a lot of contemplating our relationship with social media and content and kind of like what we want for this channel and ultimately whenever i take a break i always look forward to coming back to the channel and to making more content. I'm the biggest advocate for taking breaks. I think it's so important to step away, reassess your relationship with whatever the thing you're taking a break from is and recharging. And this vlog is going to be a lot about that because I don't know about all of you, but the pressure that we put on ourselves at the start of the year is just it, it has to be stopped and i'm one of those people who loves setting goals who loves you know like journaling mood boarding thinking about goals don't get me wrong i think it can be very beneficial and incredibly motivating i by no means am saying that goals and resolutions are inherently negative i just think that the pressure that comes with the new year and the pressure that we put on ourselves can be a little bit depressing i've been feeling a little bit down getting a little overexcited about goals and you know you start running through the list and basically start getting that very icky feeling of like whoa I want to change everything about myself and that means that I'm not good as I am which is the biggest lie the biggest pile of garbage um, and this is a little reminder to all of you watching that you know, it may be a new year, but there doesn't have to be a new you because the you you already are is perfectly wonderful, as is. And that's a very much a reminder for myself as well. I needed that little grounding moment because um, I tend to get a little over exuberant about setting goals. I'm definitely a huge list girly and resolutions girly and I love thinking about things like what's my word of the year, um, what areas do I want to improve, what are small achievable habits that I can incorporate into my life to just make things a little bit better, maybe spend time a little bit more intentionally. With that being said, I'd like to thank Ritual for sponsoring this video. 2023 was honestly kind of a daunting year for me health-wise. I think I mentioned in the last video that I had some struggles with my gut health and my doctor actually recommended that I start taking a B12 supplement and a vitamin D supplement. So I'm so excited that Ritual's multivitamin, their essential for women, actually has both of those. I've been wanting to incorporate a multivitamin anyway and the fact that this is kind of like the three things that I need in one is absolutely perfect for my routine this way you're not just like chugging pills all day their delayed release capsule design is also designed to be gentle on your stomach and as a person with a sensitive stomach this is huge for me this is also the perfect time to try ritual because they're actually having a 40% off New Year's sale so a great time to get started and get a really good deal I love that ritual really goes above and beyond industry standard for seeking out the most rigorous certification as well as testing every batch of their product for heavy metals, microbes, allergens. They're also vegan friendly, gluten and major allergen free, as well as non-GMO project verified. Huge shout out to Ritual for sponsoring this section of the video. Make sure to take advantage of their 40% off new year sale and use the code on screen and the link in my description for 40 percent off your first month with ritual it has been really nice to get back into a routine this week i obviously was away for the holidays if you follow me on instagram you will have seen my time back at home with my family in montana i love instagram stories and i feel like that's the place where i most regularly post so definitely follow me on there if you haven't already i was home in montana for two weeks then i came back to new york city and i fell ill. I had a very small cold, but it still was a cold nonetheless. So I wasn't firing on all cylinders. I was feeling just like run down. Needed to just spend time on the couch and recharge, feel better. And this week I really started hitting it back hard with my routine and I'm a person that thrives with routine. Like simply to maintain like my well-being and my mental health and um, I think that my biggest goal like when I went through and started making a list of like things that I wanted for this year and things that I wanted for myself I want to work on having my day-to-day -day life reflect my values a little bit better and two of my values are community and creativity and those are two things that I think desperately need to be fostered for myself this year. I did art and music all through high school and as I think a lot of us do when they get sucked into, you know, college and post-grad life and 
entering the corporate world like those things fell by the wayside and it really makes me very sad and leads me to feeling kind of a lack of fulfillment in my life like I enjoy my job and everything's like smooth sailing there but I really owe it to myself to prioritize incorporating creativity more into my day-to-day -day life and also community I think that community in New York City is so important a lot of us live really far away from our families and our friends are everything so I really would love to host more in my apartment, make an effort to water the friendships I already have as well as connect with new people. I am always looking to make new friends. There's so many people in New York. It's such an amazing city to connect with all sorts of different people. So I'm really excited to work on those two main things as my overarching goal. This morning I had my cute little routine. I've been doing my morning pages. I'm actually doing The Artist's Way. I started it last year and then got overwhelmed and never completed it. So we're actually committing to this this year. Like this is this has been kind of my number one priority the last week. I'm still in my first week of it. I did my morning pages today. Three pages of stream of consciousness writing and I'm also you guys would be so proud of me I have stopped looking at my phone first thing in the morning I'm trying to really make the most out of my hatch alarm by not keeping my phone in my bedroom when it comes to my morning and night routines just because as much as I love some TikTok time in bed it puts a standstill and derails my entire day just because it's so it can be so addicting to just scroll and scroll and scroll that I don't think about things like when am I gonna get up and wash my face? When am I gonna make myself breakfast? And then it just stalls all of those things and pushes everything till later. And then I end up beating myself up and just not having a great start to my day. So as much as I love, I love my TikTok time in bed, I'm trying to swap it out for journaling or reading. So this is the first week that I've done it and I've done it every day and I'm really proud of myself. Went to Core Power this morning, it felt so good, it's been so nice to get um, more movement in my day to day life. Like working from home, I feel like I am so sedentary so I'm trying to, at least during the work week when I'm not like out and about in the city walking around, I'm trying to do like an exercise class almost every day like four or five times a week and if I'm feeling a long walk instead I'll do a long walk but this week um, I did four exercise classes so I'm really proud of that since this was my first week back into a routine like really thinking about like habits and goals and stuff and I did start to feel a little bit overwhelmed um, today we're going to reset and recharge I definitely need to refresh and clean the apartment I need to take down the Christmas tree we still have our Christmas tree up and it is so dead in the artist way you take yourself on an artist date every week I was debating doing my artist date tonight and like going to the Met or something but I wanted to listen to my body and honor the theme of this video and so we're gonna have a cozy little self-care night in so yeah come along with me i'm gonna start off by tidying up the apartment it's a complete disaster and i'm so looking forward to it i just know that after today i'm gonna feel so much better have been put away. Now comes the insanely daunting task of uh, taking the Christmas tree down six flights of stairs. These are the moments where I'm like, huh, what would it be like to have an elevator? <laughs> My mom is a genius and she always uses like a fitted sheet to take down the Christmas tree. I tried this last year, it did still get pine needles everywhere but that was because we had like an eight foot tree let's hope this little guy leaves less of a mark on the world but it's really dead it's so much more fun to set up the christmas tree than it is to take it all down this is not fun oh here she is in all her splendor i think this will be easier to envelop this time. 
Okay. No, this is great. Here she is. The tree has officially been taken down. I'm so proud of myself. I really did not want to do that and we clearly have put it off for a long time. Um, this is not actually the longest we've had our tree up. I think once we did leave it up till February, I ran into my super in the hall and I was like, of course, like I just always have this fear of like getting into trouble for doing something wrong in our building. And he's so lovely, like we have such a great rapport and relationship but i still get really anxious about like getting in trouble or doing something wrong and um i was walking down the stairs and i was like i hope i was like i hope i don't run into anybody like this is just like a, it's like a, you have a huge tree wrapped in sheets you're stumbling down six flights of stairs it's just not a very it's not a very elegant activity i heard steps coming and i was like what if it was the super and it was uh, but everything was fine. I was like, is it okay if I just leave this outside? And he was like, yes, that's totally fine. So, um, I didn't get in trouble. Not today, at least. I just realized that I forgot the stockings, so we're gonna have to put these away too. The apartment is still very much a mess. I have to make dinner at some point. It's already like five, so yeah, the night is young though. Let's, let's keep resetting and refreshing so that Hopefully the rest of the weekend I can just relax. I mean, this isn't, yeah, this is not stressful. This is not stressful. I'm trying to convince myself. No, this is good, this is good. I clearly have not been vlogging because I'm so out of practice. Oh, oh Bertie, you look two days old. Knock that off. She literally looks like this. No, why, why is she serving to him Toro? What should we watch tonight? Okay. I don't know why you could not put this toolbox up. Are you going up? Yes. You want to take this saw to... Oh my god. What's with that? You don't like bending or going up? up. Yes. Anyway. What if I won my short story contest? Well, if you keep entering, I don't see why you wouldn't. Or even with this one. This one's good. Thank you. Something that I have always taken really real pride in is that a lot of people write very sad yeah. first. And I feel like it's better to be funny first and then get them with the profound. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Pink and Sorry. I mean, like, sorry for my scars. That's so rude. I was even... Okay. I'm not stealing focus. Stealing focus from my scar hands here. Stop. Stop. so needed especially like the whole taking down christmas side of things that was something that i was putting off for like 
a couple weeks honestly but now i'm feeling so much more at ease so much more refreshed going into this next week and i really feel like i can just like start anew and it feels like a new chapter which is so exciting even though i've definitely been having feelings of being overwhelmed regarding the new year i do feel really good about 2024 it really does feel like such a fresh start i feel like i went through a little bit of a slump I want to say like October through December. I feel like there was so much in the air for me around that time and I just felt like I was going through a big transitional shift in so many areas of my life. I stopped seeing my therapist. I began looking for a new therapist. I'm still looking for someone who's the right fit. I ended up switching anxiety medications, which was so difficult. If anyone's been through the process of weaning off of one medication and starting a new one, it honestly took me until now. Like I started the process in October. Now mid-January, I'm finally feeling back to myself. And it just, it took so long and it was so, so grueling. And it definitely also was something that sparked my my slump from october to december it was rough i definitely struggled with a lot of feelings of um depression and anxiety especially with these darker colder months seasonal depression is definitely something i struggle with as well so um the fact that i was doing this big um switch up with my medication was uh, not fun it was not fun it was really really hard but i'm really feeling so much more like myself so much more back to normal and i think that like that new SSRI has really kicked in and I'm, I'm feeling really good and really optimistic about um, the future. I also deleted my dating apps, put a pause on dating, at least for now. I think there's definitely just so many areas of my life that I need to stop ignoring and I need to prioritize. I really think that fulfillment and purpose was something I was struggling with a lot last year. For the first time ever, I think, I finally have a job where I'm not being micromanaged every second of every day. I know I've been post-grad for a while now, but I think coming from being in a structure where you're in school every single day, and then you join the corporate world where someone is telling you what to do every single minute of every day. Cut to present day where I have so much more flexibility, so much more work-life balance, so much more freedom which are all amazing things and something I've been striving towards for so many years in my career but I think it's the first time that I've had to kind of call the shots of what my day-to-day -day is going to look like what my schedule is going to be and I feel so lucky to be in a job now where that's the situation because it took so long for me to get to this point but at the same time I've been having kind of an internal struggle how to manage my own time what I want my life to look like outside of work what do I want for myself what do I want for my day-to-day -day? and I almost think that the lack of structure the very rigid structure that I've had for the last like five years of my career almost felt paralyzing to me to the point that I just kind of like froze and really didn't know what to do with myself or my time or how to fill my days and my life and um, I've just been kind of at a standstill honestly in the last year and it was a lot of coming to terms with the fact that like I had been lacking a feeling of purpose and fulfillment and I'm very very content in my role right now and I feel so lucky um, but at the same time I kind of had a little bit of a breakdown and was like, okay, something has to change. So I feel like the end of last year was a lot of tearing things down and now we're starting to build from the ground up again. Towards the end of last year, I did so much unpacking of my feelings and um, looking inward and thinking about my life that I definitely feel like I have so much more clarity going into this year and I know the things that I want to change about my life and I feel like I have such a deeper understanding of myself and my values and what I want out of life and it feels really good. I feel like I got so much clarity and closure on things towards the end of last year that um, now that I am kind of like rebuilding, I feel really excited to do so. That being said, I know we've done a lot of chatting about goals and resetting and feelings and um, I thought that for the end of this video it would be so fun to walk you guys through my 2024 bingo card. I got this idea from my friend Kat and I thought it was genius. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, as much as I love goals and resolutions i think they can be a little bit overwhelming but i loved kat's bingo card because she also included so many little things to do just to spark joy and i think that, that is 
equally important as like career goals health goals so i thought i've babbled enough about goals and where my head is at regarding the new year that i'll just share my 2024 bingo card i do want to do a disclaimer that um it is probably not realistic that i will do all of these things but this is just a fun exercise it's something that i did with aline and um we had so much fun brainstorming what we wanted to put on there there's a mix of stuff that's a little bit more realistic and fun and silly and joyful and then there's a few like more career adjacent things i'm not putting pressure on myself to do all of these things because it is a lot but this is more to serve as a guide of what i want for the next year and again i have the entire year to do this and i feel like a lot of these things i've already worked towards for a while and like already implement them in my life enough that they're realistic so it's a good i think it's a good healthy mix so let's walk through my bingo card i think i'm going to um put it up here on the screen let's make some room for it next to me number one is probably the biggest one alina and i are planning an international trip we are planning to go to the uk this year and we're so excited i haven't been to europe in years and since the pandemic i really haven't prioritized travel it's just seemed really daunting and i really want to prioritize travel this year um and i'm so excited to go on an international trip to go somewhere new and to just explore and have a little bit more adventure in my life and yeah we're just gonna have so much fun i don't think we've done a solo sister trip abroad so this is huge for us i want to host a dinner party as i mentioned community is one of my core values and definitely something i want to lean into this year so i really want to host a dinner party even if it's just like a two three person dinner party i did that last year and it was a lot more low maintenance but i would love to get into hosting more in my apartment i really want to go on a solo trip i think that's something that i always say that i want to do but i keep pushing off but i really want to do that i've done some solo traveling in my life and it's always so fulfilling i want to read 25 books i read 23 books last year including audiobooks for the record audiobooks absolutely count as reading and i feel like since incorporating audiobooks as well as reading physical books, I have been reading so much more and consuming so much more uh, literature, if you will, and it feels really good. Reading was one of my main hobbies as a kid, and I feel like I did a lot of discovering the genres that I really gravitate towards in the last year, and I feel like I'm on a roll, so 25 is very realistic for me. Excited to continue my journey as a reader in my adulthood. It feels really good to finally feel like that is a consistent habit for me, and yeah. I'm really excited about it. I want to do a craft I've been meaning to do. So maybe something I saved on TikTok, maybe something I pinned on Pinterest. I feel like I'm always saving stuff and always saying that I want to do crafts. Yeah, I would just like to have these ideas in mind ahead of time and save them for like a sleepy afternoon versus trying to cram them in last minute when things are stressful. I want to take an art workshop. Aline got me a gift card to an art workshop um, in Cold Spring. Cold Spring is one of our favorite little upstate destinations to go visit outside the city and so i am looking forward to doing a little jaunt up there i think they have a watercolor workshop that i would love to do i want to perform music somewhere 2022 was such a good year for me i feel like i performed music like a couple of times with my sister and her girlfriend ellis and we had so much fun like we kind of just like started this little like cover band and we would do band practice in our apartment and we had a couple of gigs in 2022 and it was so fun and then we kind of just like fell out of the habit and out of the rhythm of practicing and of um making it a priority but even if it was just for one night and one night only i would love to get the band back together i have eat at cafe sabarski cafe sabarski is an austrian restaurant in the new gallery by the metropolitan museum of art and i really want to go i've been wanting to go for a couple of years and doing like either a little like solo date where i go to the new gallery and then i grab like a little slice of cake or a bite at um cafe sabarski but it's been something I've been wanting to do for like the last few years and I just never have done it. And it's like right across the park from me. Next, I have go dancing with my friends. I'm not really like a clubbing person, but I love finding a cool place 
that you can dance. Me and my friends really love going to drag shows and the drag show that we typically go to has like a dancey element afterwards and we danced post Grinch drag and it felt so good. Like I love dancing and I'm not good at it, but I love to go out and dance. Even just like sober, like I like to dance. Um, so I have go dancing on here. Um, maybe I'm entering my going out era, probably not, but I think at least once we have a couple spots that we wanna try out that have some dancing involved, which I think would be so fun. It's so healing to me to just like go out on the town jump around with your friends, maybe have a drink or two, maybe not, and yeah, just let loose a little bit. Next I have do karaoke. Karaoke is one of my favorite things and I feel like I never do it anymore. Even if it was just me, Aline, and Ellis going to like a little karaoke place and getting one of those private rooms, I think we would have an absolute ball. I think it would be so fun. So um, I want to make sure that this year I do karaoke at least one time. I also put go to three new museums or galleries, which that's something that's super realistic for me. Going to museums, seeing exhibitions, and going to see art are all things that I love incorporating in my day to day anyway. So that's not a super overwhelming goal, which is great because we've got to have them sprinkled in because this is a lot of stuff. Um, I also put go see five live performances and that could be theater, concerts, ballet, opera, etc. I want to take advantage of living in New York more. I feel like I do that here and there, but I definitely go through stretches of time where I'm like, oh my god, right, I live in New York City. I can do so many cool things. And there are so many great deals that you can get too that I feel like I'm just like not really aware of. So I want to look into that more. I know Aline just got on the New York Philharmonic's under 30 list where you can get affordable tickets to see the New York Philharmonic. So um, yeah, there's opportunity to see stuff for not a lot of money as well. Next I have join a choir or music group. I last year was struck with the feeling of missing being in choir. I did choir all through high school and then was in an acapella group in college for a little bit. And I was also in a community theater musical my senior year. So I just like miss being in a group of people and singing. I feel like there has to be a choir or some sort of music group in New York City that I could join. I there has to be. So, I want to at least look into this more this year and like see if there's something that could be a right fit, a right fit for what I'm looking for. I'm just like I want to chase that like after school extracurricular feeling that like feels like this gaping hole in my life. Next, I have finally complete the artist's way. I talked about this in the beginning of this video, but I'm doing the artist's way right now. Um, and I'm really excited to see how it goes for me this time. Next, I have find a new therapist. This is something that will absolutely happen this year. Um, I just haven't really like sat down and done the research to get it going. After about like two, three months off from therapy, I really miss it. So I would love to find a new therapist who ideally I really love and can like build a longer term relationship with. Next, I have film an apartment tour. So this is something that I've put off a lot because I struggle from really intense perfectionism and it's held me back from doing so many things. I have so many things and so many ideas of what I could do to this apartment for it to look even better, but my apartment is beautiful. I feel really proud of it. I think that like I've developed so much in my interior decorating style and abilities. It's taken a long time to get to where I am today, but I feel really good and really proud of the space that I've curated and I put a lot of work into it even though there still could be a long ways to go. You guys will most likely get one this year. Um, I, I feel like as much as there are projects that I still want to do, I've gotten to a point where I'm really happy with the way that the apartment looks, which is huge. Next, I have work with a dream brand. I have a lot of dream brands that I'd love to work with, but um, also this is something a little bit more personal when it comes to like, I don't know, who I want to work with. Next, I have go draw at a museum. I did this um, a couple summers ago when I was unemployed and it was so healing. I feel like I learned so much about my own um, art style and it was such a cool way to even more deeply appreciate looking at art and seeing things in a completely new way. Um, so I think that I need to get back out there and go draw at a museum again. Next, I want to take myself on a date. I feel like I'm really good about doing this, 
but I want to make sure that it's still on my radar for um, something to prioritize for 2024. Next, I have attend or throw a Halloween party. Every time Halloween rolls around, I'm like, should I throw a party? Should I throw a party? Should I throw a party? And then I feel like I wait until the last minute and then I don't have any Halloween plans. And Halloween is a holiday that I love. I love putting together a costume, even if it's with stuff that I already have. But um, every single year I get so much FOMO around like that specific holiday and I've thought a lot about it and I really want to make sure that this year if I don't have Halloween plans or if no one's throwing a party in my circle I'm gonna be the one who's gonna throw a party even if it's a small get-together even if it's like a movie night come in a costume if you want um, I want to make sure that I have like solidified Halloween plans because every year every year at the end of October I start spiraling with like Oh, I should have planned something but I didn't in this case FOMO is like a little bit more valid and I think I need to like listen to those feelings of wanting to participate in this holiday that I really think is so fun next I have walk from the top to the bottom of Manhattan this is something that um, my sister's girlfriend and my very good friend Ellis did last year and we joined for like a couple miles and it was so fun. This is something that we've all talked about doing this year together so I'm excited and a great way to again take advantage of where I live. Next I have host a Valentine's Day party. This is currently in the works. I need to um, I need to design the invitation but I think I want to throw a cute little like crafty girls day um gathering for galentine's day again this goes hand in hand with wanting to host more in my space wanting to prioritize old friendships new friendships and i think that also having people over in your space really helps in just like deepening those connections and also introducing different friend groups to each other next i have an easy one this is just explore a new new york city neighborhood this is another one with taking advantage of where i live and there are so many cool neighborhoods that i've never been to so i would love to explore a little bit more and get out of my comfort zone i very much tend to stay in the bubble of like the five to ten block radius around where i live just out of like comfort and i would love to just get a little bit more adventurous this year next i really liked that cat had like her free space as turn whatever age you're turning so i have turned 29 i turned 29 next month february 12th and I'm really looking forward to it. Like this is the last year of my 20s, which can feel a little bit daunting, but everything that I've heard about your 30s is like the coolest thing ever. And so many people have rave reviews of being in your 30s. As someone who suffers from like really bad self-doubt, perfectionism, like wavering confidence, I feel like as I've gotten older, all of that stuff has kind of just like We've like slowly been turning that volume down and I just can't wait for that to keep getting better and to continue like deepening the relationship with myself as much as like the last year of your 20s definitely feels like it, it's a little sad like it's a, a little sad and can be a little bit like scary because it's a completely like it's a whole decade just like chapter closing but i'm very much looking forward to going out with a bang this year and just like making the most of my final year my 20s so uh that being said thank you so much for joining me for this video i i hope you liked it i do feel like i am a little bit rusty with vlogging but i have missed youtube so much and you guys gave me so many great video suggestions over on instagram so i have so many ideas me and aline have so many goals for things that we'd like to do more on this channel and she has a video coming up soon for you guys that's um a little bit more like us in the city like doing fun things this was a little bit more like chill we're at home we're resetting we're chatting we're getting caught up with each other but we have some really fun videos planned and um as i mentioned about like struggling with fulfillment and purpose and wanting to pri prioritize my creativity more youtube is absolutely a part of that um and i just want to thank you guys for always being so wonderful and patient with our 
very erratic uploading schedule. Consistency is something that we've struggled with a lot and a lot of that is the result of us obviously having other jobs but now that I'm finding a little bit more like work-life balance, a little bit more autonomy in my own schedule, like I do want to prioritize YouTube more this year. So yeah, thank you so much for your unwavering patience and your support and your encouragement. We've done YouTube for so long that can sometimes feel like, okay, like, does anyone even care? Like, is this still like something that people want? And so it's always so encouraging when people like say that they missed us and um, are excited for more content to come. So yeah, I feel so grateful about this cute little community that we built and can't wait to foster more creativity, more community this year together. Sending so much love your way. A huge thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. And a huge shout out to y'all for being so receptive to when we do have paid partnerships on here that make it possible to continue making content. Thanks so much again for watching. Happy New Year and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.